Okay, so in this video we're checking out the Totgard e-bike. This is a fairly generic looking uh, mountain bike frame. 26 inch wheels, 21 speed, uh, Shimano shifters and derailleurs. The um, bike itself came very well packed uh, in terms of shipping, uh, no damage. It actually took longer to take off all of the um, zip ties and stuff in the unpacking. And um, actually assembling it wasn't that difficult, probably took about 30 minutes. Really the only things you have to put on are the handlebars in the front there uh, and the kickstand on the bottom. The uh, product page actually has a pretty good video on how to put it together and covers everything and uh, if you go to the link you at the, one of the images at the very bottom is the actual video for putting it together. It's actually pretty straightforward. Most of it's already assembled. Uh, you just have to put the battery on, handlebars and the kickstand. So in terms of uh, bike functions, it has a Shimano uh, turny derailleur and shifter system. So it's 21 speed, so you got seven gears in the back, uh, three in the front. And of course you have your shifters here on the handlebars as well as your brakes. The brakes are um, mechanical disc brakes. I think they're 180 millimeter rotors. So pretty standard there, nothing too fancy. The front wheel is detachable. Uh, it does have a quick release system. Uh, you can also use the uh, fixed axle if you would prefer. You have a light here in the front, which we can turn off on. I'll show you in a second here. And a front reflector and a rear reflector. There's no uh, rear brake light. The battery is a 36 volt 10.4 amp hour battery. And uh, the motor here in the back is a 350 watt motor. So the battery you can uh, remove if you want to charge it off of the bike and you just have to unlock it with the key that's included. There is an on off switch here that uh, you can use to turn off the battery. If you're not gonna be using the bike for a while, that'll help prevent battery drain. So overall the bike weighs uh, about 45 pounds. It's not super heavy or not, it's not super light either. Got a couple of switches here in the front. So this one turns, if you hold this, it'll turn the light on in the front here. And you actually have to, have to turn on the bike first. So uh, turn on the bike, you long press the M button here on this display for three seconds. And that'll turn the display on. It is an okay display, it's not super bright, but uh, it depends on the viewing angle of the uh, what you're looking at. It's, it's actually pretty visible. So shows you the current, um, see the, the odometer, trip odometer, voltage to the battery, uh, and a few other stats here as long as you're on time. Shows you your battery power. Uh, the assist level is indicated with a bar down here. Press up to go to assist level two, and then you have assist level three. You have different speeds uh, based on how much assist to your, um, what the assist level you have and also what kind of uh, incline or decline you're on. So I'll show you that when we're actually riding. Yeah, so down here again, turn the light on like so. You can see we have the light on now. And then this button here is the horn. Uh, okay, that sounds interesting. Well, one more thing I forgot is on the battery itself, you can press this button and it'll show you the current charge level. If you just want to look at that without actually turning the bike on and the, uh, obviously the included chargers. Um, uh, part of the system, you don't have to buy the separately, it's included. The charging port here is on the side. It is an IP54 rated waterproof uh, charging port. And it takes about five hours to charge from empty to full. Just have some front shocks here, uh, front suspension. You can lock this if you uh, don't want it to actually move. Currently it's in the open position. You just rotate this here and I'll lock the front fork and it won't uh, actually give you any uh, suspension. But I, I prefer obviously for a little bit of a better ride to turn that on. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything. Go ahead and uh, give this a ride and I'll talk about more as I'm riding along. So this e-bike has uh, three standard riding modes. It's uh, pretty much common on a lot of e-bikes. You can just ride it like a regular bicycle. 
and not turn the power on and just you know do the regular gear shifting pedaling etc it will function pretty much the same as any other bike uh, without any uh, assisted electrical power the other mode is the um, assisted pedaling mode so you turn on the e-bike and you can set your uh, assist level one two or three and you'll get um, various amounts of motor assist based on the power level so of course this is while you're pedaling and uh, on pedal assist level one you'll get about uh, you can get up to about six miles an hour and there's a I guess there's a speed governor on the motor so after it reaches a certain speed on the speedometer it will stop providing additional power so your speed won't increase uh, it does not take in, uh, inclines into account though so it uh, you if you're going downhill you'll be actually going faster and if you're going uphill you go slower uh, so uh, it does not maintain your speed based on the inclines based on just uh, it's about six miles an hour based on a uh, level uh, surface and then um, on speed uh, I'm sorry assist level two you'll take you up to about 12 or 13 miles per hour and then on level three you'll get the maximum which is uh, 19.8 miles per hour and I believe it's limited to that because it's a class one e-bike and it can't go any faster than that uh, according to most regulations at most places so that is where it is basically limited to and you can of course ride it manually and go faster there's no limit there of course if you're just riding it manually and the third mode is um, just basically a motor only function so you don't have to pedal and then you can use the twist throttle which is on the right side of the, the right grip and you it is proportional so if you only turn the throttle about halfway you get about half the power or you can go full, um, the full twist and get the full amount of power available to you. And the speed uh, limits are the same, basically on level 1 it's about 6, level 2 is about 12, and level 3 is 19.8 miles per hour. Of course, if you're um, just using the throttle only, that uses more battery uh, quickly, so your range is going to be less than if you're, if you're pedaling um, or providing some sort of uh, pedal assist in uh, in terms of like you know using your legs to provide uh, the power forward um, so the range is going to really depend on how you use the bike the surfaces you're on um, how hilly it is etc your conditions uh, I think the minimum advertised range is around 19 miles total on the battery and so which is not too bad for uh, this class at 350 watts and uh, only a 10.4 amp hour battery now in terms of how um, this bike handles hills, it will speed up when you go downhill. If you're going on inclines uphill, uh, you'll want to, if you're in the pedal assist mode, you'll want to uh, drop down a few gears so that uh, you have more torque on the motor or the torque on the on the, on the the pedals available to you so you can go up higher on um, you know, steeper inclines. It will um, provide pedal assist up to a 30 degree incline. So uh, obviously the steeper the incline, um, the more you'll have to pedal. I have tried some inclines around 20 degrees and uh, you're probably going to want to be in power level 2 for that and for anything more you probably want to go to your power level 3 to get up those inclines. With that being said, it, it does have enough power to go up all those inclines up to about 30 degrees. Beyond that, I think um, you're probably going to want to look at a different class of bike with a more powerful motor and bigger battery at that point. Now in terms of the uh, Shimano Turney uh, derailers and shifters, it's an entry level system, it works. It um, was a little bit out of adjustment, out of the box, which is not unexpected for this entry level um, shifting system. So um, if you may need to do some minor adjustments to get the shifts to be a little bit smoother or a, bit, a little bit rough out of the box. Uh, the same goes for the brakes. Typically mechanical disc brakes um, do require some minor adjustments. Um, the rears were okay, didn't make, didn't make any noises. The front was rubbing a little bit and required a slight amount of adjustment, but nothing, not, not a big deal. It was, um, you know, if you owned a bicycle before, these kinds of adjustments are pretty simple to do and take very little time. Now, overall, I thought the bike uh, rode really nice. Uh, the shocks for the suspension in the front was pretty good for bumps. The there's no uh, shocks in the, uh, in the rear, so. You know that combined with the the seat, which is a bit on the hard side, I think that if you are looking for something a little more comfortable, you probably want to um, uh, make a seat change. Uh, there's obviously lots of third-party seats out there that you can get to um, you know increase your comfort level 
with additional padding, but yeah, the seat's a little small and a bit hard, so if you're looking for a comfortable ride, you're probably going to, want to swap that out, but you know, at this price point, you know, uh, buying an extra seat for about 30 to $40, um, I think it's going to be worth it in terms of increasing your comfort if you're going to be doing longer rides. If it's, if it's for shorter rides, I think it's fine. Um, you know, for me, up to about 10 minutes was okay. Beyond that, I felt like I think I needed to swap the seat out. Anyway, for around $500, this e-bike is a pretty good value. Uh, I think there's a lot of other ones out there that are similar um, in terms of specs and in terms of the power that are roughly, in my, in my estimation from the research I did, about $100, $150 more. Um, and of course, there's uh, you know much better e-bikes out there for double the price. You know, a thousand to two thousand dollars is obviously a lot better models out there than this one. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's uh, you know on the sort of lower end entry level, but not too expensive in terms of your budget, then this one is definitely one you want to check out. Anyway, it's gonna do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.